Hello and welcome to another Proxmace Fails At and this week it's Star Conflict, a game I'm actually reasonably competent with for a change because I've actually been playing it a bit. Right, let's get rid of all this gump and let's explain what's going on. Star Conflict it's like a it's basically like Eve, but without all the spreadsheets, is the kind of simplest way to put it. You have different ships, which, and you've got currencies, get to the moment. To start off with, there's ship trees, which you can go up in different tiers. You have to get a certain amount of synergy with the previous tiers. Obviously, some of them, you, know, you have to have both of those before you can get that one, and so on. And then there's the purchase for real money option which is the uh, yeah because this is a free to play game so that's the way they've chosen to go with it which is fine because basically it just gives you access to the next tier or you no know, tier and a half just a bit early so that's not so bad these are all the kind of second versions of of the ship some with the federation which is one of the three factions the federation and the other two, which I didn't bother to learn, because I'm just killing them. <laughs> so yeah, they always have their ship trees. So the ships I've got, this kind of very, the, the ships are very well modelled in this. So you've got this kind of small single cockpit fighter, which, if we look at the equipment, has this micro warp engine, so it can warp across the map. So it's very good for sneaking up on guys basically snipers, inverted commas, and then we go to this one, this is the gunship, so it's a little bit bigger, a bit heavier armed, it has an overdrive module, which just increases your firing rate and, and kind, of just kind of everything you need to blow stuff out of the sky really, and then up here this is a frigate, this is the long range frigate, which means it's effectively turned into a sniper rifle with the disintegrator. So you have kind of primary weapons and then you have missiles on in the case of this frigate, there's the mine layer. But each of these you can buy different versions of for either the currency, which is this kind of grey credits down here, or you can buy the premium ones for these gold coins which are bought with real money, which is fine. And again different kind of upgrades for those weapons and so on and all of these kind of active activatable modules you have a wide variety there's more different ones the different levels of the ship you have and so you can kind of you can reasonably well customize a particular ship to the kind of thing you want and they do look very pretty right so contracts you kind of align with a kind of a separate faction of your faction. Yeah, that's not, a <laughs> not not confusing. Basically, you can sign these contracts, and when you complete them, you get a little bit of extra loyalty, which you rank up, and a little bit extra money. So it's kind of a way to earn more money than you would just by competing. So you can see you can level up all the way to level 15, which is ridiculously expensive in terms of how much loyalty, but as you level up, the contracts you can take offer more loyalty. So you start at level zero and work your way up. So you can see, win one battle, destroy one ship attacking a beacon, or destroy five ships not belonging to the Empire. So if we now go into a battle, you can see there's, there's several different types. There's a PvP, which I'll show you in a bit, which you can choose one of these areas we're kind of a bit pinned back. It's kind of a bit like Planet Side 2 in the way that it's kind of sector controlled. You have PvE missions, which are kind of set scenarios, but you can only enter ones based on the ranks of your ships. So at the moment I can only offer uh, enter these one with rank 1 options, because I don't have a high enough level ship to get into any of the others, but that's fine. It's quite hard actually. Maybe it's just because I'm not as good as I think I am. And then you've got these custom battles, which are, are you know, set up and you know, they're locked, so people have set them up so they can play with their friends or, or whatever. So you can just go down and create there. You've got 
all different kinds there. You can set the server region, any different settings for what rank people need to be, what roles they can take, friendly fire on, you know, all those kind of things. So that's 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 really awesome. Let's go into a PvP. Engage. All right. So here's the uh, pre-game window. It allows you to choose what ship you want. You can also see. You can kind of learn these silhouettes, like this one here, and you can hover over to kind of show it up. Is an engineering frigate, a long a guard frigate, and a f command fighter from those are from one of the other factions. You see your own vessels, and then select which one you want. So you select the gunship. Oh, and immediately get crashed into. So the controls. Uh, w, S, A, and D, but W is fast, you know, basically go forward, and S is go backward, so they're kind of throttle controls. And then A and D are strafing, Q and E are rolling, and then space to go up, whoops, <laughs> and then out to go down, and then sh you can press shift to kind of use up your energy, which is kind of this bar just on the left here of the HUD, to go faster. Um, basically what do you do with that? Well you fly around and you shoot things. So you can see there's a lock mechanic here which gives you a target to shoot at and I've launched a missile which you can do once it's locked. Alright so incoming missile I can launch those flares you can see that uses energy and uses the cooldown on that thing. It's really hard to try and point when the mouse is actually controlling where you're pointing. So my shields have run out, Ooh. Uh, being shot down. Uh, so I'm just going to go and hide behind this massive asteroid here that we're kind of flying between. Give my shield a chance to regenerate and my energy as well. So this is a beacon control map. So it's basically capture the point. You get. That. <laughs> trying to point up on the top of the screen you can see there's three you can see who controls what whether there's any under attack and how many points you're earning and your weapons do overheat so you can't just continuously fire so with this ship in particular it's kind of good to go up behind someone hit one which increases the crit chance of the weapon and then Oh. Being lasered. Deploy flares. And yeah, this is the kind of. Oh. Get you. So you can see the crosshair there. So it gives you. Basically, it, it shows you how to lead the target, which is really good because. In these kind of games where leading the target is required because it's kind of moving in three dimensions, uh, Tribe Descent is another one where you really have to learn to lead the target. It's quite heavily skill based, and this is just a nice way to kind of introduce people to it without kind of needing a load. Hey, I just got an achievement destroy 100 ships. Not needing a load of practice in the game because leading the target is is a very difficult skill. Whoops. So there's two different types of flying controls you can use, which is kind of normal and realistic they're called. I fly on the realistic ones. I can't say I've noticed a massive amount of difference. I think it is just preference. It's not like this ship handles better for some reason. Uh, as I say, I'm about to get blown up. There we go. I got exploded. It. So you get you know, the standard. It's not a kill cam. You just get to see who killed you. And you get back to here. So I'm going to choose my kind of little interceptor here. So this is much more manoeuvrable, goes much faster, but drains its energy faster. And it can do this, which is the best get out of jail free card ever. And that takes you away about 12,000 meters. So it's, it's, you can kind of run in, do some damage and jump out. 
you see it's got a cooldown down the bottom. Uh, your missiles have a cooldown between when you can use them and also once you run out of the whole set it will actually recharge an amount, take an amount of time to recharge, it's usually in a, cu a couple of minutes to recharge a, f a full set of missiles. Uh, come on, just waiting for my uh, micro warp to recharge. There we go, and out of there. Oh, <laughs> that's a long missile. I don't think that's going to reach me. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> So, get back into the fight, <laughs> from a long way away. But we're not doing that great, kind of holding on to two beacons now, but well, this one's under attack, so I'll go and help defend that. You don't know what kind of um, multiplayer mode you're going to be into when you launch. You just launch and go into a region, and it tends to it seems to cycle between two different the two different game types, which is this kind of capture the point mode and the captain's mode, which is basically a team death match. But if your captain gets killed, there's no more respawns for your team. So obviously, a good technique is to you know get several people with the interceptors jump back because the captain will be sitting at the back and take out the captain quickly while keeping yours safe which is harder well it's, it's harder than it sounds because for the first like couple of days of this nobody really kind of caught on to the fact that this was possible to do but now you kind of leap back there and there will be people just sitting there all right so now i'm the sniper frigate which you can see kind of gives you this <laughs> right, and you get your scores, see what medals you earn, destroy three vessels by the same ship, and finish an enemy ship with less than 50% with missiles. You go back to your hangar, and I completed a contract which was probably to destroy some ships and near beacons, so that was good. And you see, saw down there, hopefully, before it disappeared, that my vessels got rep auto repair and auto replenish ammo on them so well apart from this one there we go so you spend your credits to refit unless you've had an absolutely terrible game you will always get more credits than you can possibly need to refill and repair unless you've absolutely had a shocker so yeah that's uh that's the uh very excellent <laughs> pvp and let's have a go at this PvE mission. So you can see here is an incursion. Destroy all enemy ships. Keep control towers. These three points. C, A and B. And then we get increased damage and continuous solo shield regeneration to help keep us alive, which is really useful. So you've got four players here against the AI. And they just kind of send in waves for this first set. It's just slowly increasing strength. Just waiting to see where they come from. There they are. Alright, so you see these are going to be. They're really weak. Yeah, just a couple of shots and they go down. Whoops. Yeah, get him, get him, get him, get him. Whoops. That's all I missed, I would get him. Oh, never mind. Yeah, so... It's a bit kind of like a horde mode to start off with. And they kind of slowly send harder and harder AI ships at you. Which will be named different things. Like, these are just like inter invaders, you get agents, captains, commanders and if you make it through to the last level which I'm hoping I might you do get a like a big boss ship 
which is quite cool because basically you just like burn it down, just burn all your cooldowns. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you can collide with terrain. There's no terrain damage, as I will show. It makes the screen go all big and red, but you don't actually take damage from doing it. Which I didn't realise for the first couple of times. You can just slam in terrain at full speed. You bounce off, but it doesn't do anything. So it's a good way of avoiding missiles. If you get a lock on, just slam in terrain and bounce off, and the missile will hit the terrain behind you. Hopefully. So you can see we should be getting some slightly harder guys now, which I think are the agents to start with. Let's just stray for these guys. You can't actually kill a ship by ramming into it. I believe that one of these ships you can get actually has a bonus for that. You know, increased damage when you collide with another vessel. So that's a bit skillful to try and collide with something moving in three dimensional space. Oh, there we go, that's a captain, an elite one here. See, they just take a little bit more. They're not, like, ridiculously powerful yet. The commanders are pretty powerful. Loop-de-loop. Ah. Yeah. You can see the kind of... Oops, accidentally launched a missile trying to pan the world around. That was a genius move. You can see it's kind of you know, flighting over the planet, which is quite nicely rendered actually. It's, it's kind of it's a very pretty environment to fly around, and there's plenty of terrain in all of the maps to kind of dodge behind and you know try to like zip in and out of small crevasses to try and outwit an opponent. But I think that would be more tempting to do if there was actually ship damage, because you'd know that if they didn't make it through, that they would take, you know, they, they could die from it, whereas now it's, uh, they bounce off, so they just, you know, they, they're not going to lose anything by following you through, even if they're not, you know, particularly good at getting through, they're just going to bounce off the side a bit. So if, if there was terrain damage, which there may be in later levels, I'm, I'm not, you know, not not judging this on, on what I've seen, because I've not seen high-end play of any kind, because it's not been playing it for long enough, or good enough. But that would be a nice thing. Maybe it's something you can add in on the custom maps. So you can see he takes a lot of punishment there. Whoop. Yeah. So you can see the uh, that circle around your crosshair when your guns start overheating. If you wait for them to overheat all the way, it obviously take longer. Ah, right, he's a commander, and they obviously take longer to cool down. So wait for it to cool down, increase my critical hit, and there he goes, kablooey. And there we go, right, so the second part of this is to attack their base and take out their nav stations. I found that the uh, sniper is better for this because it does a lot of damage to a single target, and you kind of hang at the back and hopefully your allies protect you while you're doing this, because the frigates, while they're a massive thing actually has 1800 survivability and the gunship has 10,000 but that moves you know, it's twice as much survivability, that's quite good but they move so slowly and you can't really move at all when you're in this mode you just kind of aim with the mouse but you know, it does a big hit of damage 7,400 so you know, a couple of shots and you will take out the smaller vessels and this is where having a mouse with an easily adjustable sensitivity is brilliant because this is very sensitive in the kind of sniper mode but you yeah, know which I've dropped down on my mouse now to about 1100 dpi from about what do I normally have it like 6000 I think that sounds a bit high I may be lying I don't know <laughs> I set it up when I got it I haven't looked at it since to be fair <laughs> so we've killed that so now if I come out of this it's kind of really lumbering and we're having to do a lot of motion there but if I turn the sensitivity up the ship itself lumbers but I've got a lot more control because the uh, guns actually point towards where the cursor is on the screen which is, is really good 
In this case, it's got lasers uh -oh. and taking a lot of damage. Let's try and duck behind a bit of terrain and hopefully not die. Uh oh. Let's let's leave a minefield behind me in the hope that they uh, kill themselves on it. Oh dear, we're not doing too well here. <laughs> so it has, the, the the title of the series is very apt again. I'm failing at a game. Hooray! <laughs> it's fun. You can see these lasers take longer to overheat than the uh, kind of the, the chain guns I had on my gunship, and they do kind of they do a continuous low level of damage. Right. Let's see if I can get. get some good shots off onto this nav station. So kind of, this isn't showing off the sniper in its best light because I'm shooting at things that aren't moving, but again you have to lead the target and in this case it's a lot harder because you can actually hit stuff about 8,000 meters away, so who's shooting at me? Oh him. Yay, blow him up. <laughs> so you can see they keep on warping in while these nav stations are up, so it's really important to kind of not concentrate too much on just trying to take them out because you can't take them out fast enough, you will get overwhelmed. You really need to get a couple of nav stations down like that, then start clearing the stuff up. Whee! And then one of my mines got the other one. Nice. So you clear them up a bit just to make sure you don't die. But the lasers are quite good because there's no travel time on them, so you just aim right at the target, but they're they're less good at causing damage than the chain guns. Right. It's taking hull hits now, as you can hear. Right, where's this other nav beacon? Uh, there it is. Uh oh. I'm taking a lot of fire, and that's not what a frigate. Oh, there's a commander here. Whoops. <laughs> terrain collision. That's when I'm glad there isn't damage from terrain. Because <laughs> you look like a right prat. hide back here and looks right into the detail of this. It's actually quite well detailed. Uh oh, they're being shot at by someone who doesn't realise there's a beacon there. It's two shooting me. Uh oh, they're shooting me over there. Oh, good, good grief. Uh, <laughs> danger, danger, danger. Uh oh, overheat, overheat. Get him down. Get him down. Right, sniper. Right, let's put some big hits on this nav station. Try and get it down low. Yay, there we go. Right, now's the flagship attack, so now's kind of when we go all out and try and just basically pop that and that and then blast something you know, big. It's a massive ship, so it's, it's hard to miss it. It's a massive target. They uh, do have like a load of escort ships, but kind of the ones that I've won, everyone has just ignored those and focused directly on the big boss ship and when he blows up they go away and you win. There we go. Punisher! Ah, uh, whoops. Crash. Just, just t waste everything on it. 
So now you can see all those intercept ships. Hopefully, I will survive. Ah, boom! <laughs> we kablooey! Hopefully, my ramming did something, and that's a victory. And now you get to go for loot. So here's a purple. Obviously, I go for that. I get a bit of a unit that I can put on one of my ships, basically. And the other bits give you just kind of broken parts, which basically you just get extra money for. You get, you know, four attempts if you win. You don't get any if you lose. And I was the most effective vessel with 43 kills and 11 assists. Very nice. And you get synergy and credits, and obviously it tells you if you had a premium license, which you obviously spend money for, you get a little bit of a boost of synergy and credits, but it's not, you know, it's, it's about 50% extra, which isn't too bad. Wait, maths, 26 to 40? Um, like two thirds extra. <laughs> so you can add friends, that's my friend Tevildo. And then you claim claim your rewards. So these are the trophies I managed to pick up. I've got a passive collision compensator, which means you know there we go, reduces collision damage and increases my maneuvering speed and rotation speed. So I can slam into people without taking damage and giving them a lot more. And then I completed the contract, which was the winning the match one. So if we go back up into contracts just quickly, you'll see that the kind of slightly higher level, the loyalty level two and three, have a cooldown on how often you can take them, whereas the loyalty level one you can just take before every match. Well, once you complete it, every match after that. So it's always best to do it because you get a little bit of loyalty, a little bit of extra credits. Yeah, it doesn't it never it doesn't hurt. It doesn't cost you anything to do it. So. But yeah, basically they all offer you pretty much the same type of contracts, win one battle, win one battle, battle on a vanguard ship, win a battle, win a battle. So, but you have to sign a contract with that faction and that costs the money to start with, but yeah, you more than make it back, easily make it back. And so we'll go on to the warehouse here. So here's where you can buy all different kinds of things in the shop. Right, you know, see what weapon you want, so you can buy all the different kinds here and just put modules in your warehouse. You can check out your items, which I don't think I have any of. Oh yeah, there we go. I have one unit in warehouse, I'm not using it, so I may as well just sell it. Stuff doesn't, s well missiles don't sell for very much. Here we go, so here's some other units. So I've got an overcharged tier two, uh, T2 Mark 1 and a Mark 2, and I've got the Mark 1 installed. So I should probably install the Mark 2 if, the, if that's reasonable. There's the military shields booster. So these greens are kind of picks, pickups, or when you get to different levels with the faction, they'll give you bonuses and, and so on for that. And you can kind of specify what kind of ship. So I want a you know, gunship, here's an aiming overcharge. So okay, you can really focus it down and then all of your passive modules and stuff, so you can kind of sell off the stuff you don't need, pick up a, a, you know, if you've got a lot of spare credits, you don't want to buy the next tier of ship, you can get some, you know, the, all of the high-end items for the ships. And the way to get ships, I mentioned before, but I'll just clarify, is you can see these synergy levels up the top here. So here, that one's on three, that one's on two, that one's on one, because I've had this the longest, and then so on. To get this one, you require four synergy with this one. So I'm not three, so I'll soon get the re recon version of the interceptor that's slightly better than this. So you can kind of see that there's a slight improvement. I think if you sh yeah shift and hold it, so you can see there's an improvement. It's 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 marginal on each of them, but the high le high tier vessels do get additional extra stuff like it can hold better modules and, and so on but you know obviously you can see on this one that you're paying the price of gaining any you know a higher rate of energy use for your afterburners your roll and pitch is slowed down so it makes it less maneuverable but it gives you a bit more 
hull energy, shield energy, the shield regenerate a bit faster, you get a little bit more energy and it regens a bit faster, so, you know, it's the same with this one, is that, okay, it's a little bit weaker with the survivability, not by much, but it, you gain a load, you know, you lose a load of sensitivity to get the more survivability with the sensor range, which means the little radar on the top right doesn't pick up targets from quite so far away. But, you know, just working my way all the way down these, you <laughs> quite, so they start getting very expensive, 7 million credits for that one. The King Nindelberg, Nib, Nib, Nindelberg, where the, where did I get that from? King Nibelung, Viking, and then the Jart, the Lightbringer, and the Arch Dragon, which just. I think that's the same model as the boss we were fighting in that PvE game. But you can get engineering frigates, Quran fighters, ECM, so that's awesome. This Jarl, which. Yeah, is basically just a really, really good version of the standard interceptor. Same with the Lightbringer and same with the Arch Dragon. It's basically, you know, you can get those all the way back here, but they're just much improved versions. So if we look at the Yarl, for example, quite a lot more survivability, load more energy, and again, you can see there on the right the number of kind of parts you can put into it. So you've got you know, your standard missiles, weapon, and you can put in a load of additional modules to kind of really, really boost its strength up. So that's pretty awesome. And all of them, all the different ones have their kind of same... It's kind of the similar kind of things, but they do fulfill slightly different roles. Whereas, with, because with this faction, you go straight to the engineering frigates. And you, you know you have a plasma web, and your standard thing has a chameleon, which is basically stealth. And this one, you go to a guard frigate, and the module is a diffusion shield, so they're a bit more tanky. So it's kind of de depends what your playstyle is. I just like these ones because they're just like blow everything out of the sky as fast as possible and win. <laughs> Who can complain about that? And then there is a corporate. You, Corporations, you can join as like guilds in, in any game or groups or clans, and obviously, you can compete PvP, PvE, all the different kind of things. And uh, Alpha seem to be doing pretty well because we're at the top on both. <laughs> so that's crazy. <laughs> you can see there's a top 100 there, so there's a lot of people. Yeah, you can cr just create a corporation. And then, so in the warehouse contracts, implants. Okay, so this improves your pilot, which is kind of your player character. And you need the previous ones. I'm just going to go all the way up the Federation one because you get stuff like this up the end neutralizing all negative effects, reduces cooldown times so and modules and missiles when you destroy stuff. If you're below 50% of maximum speed, you do more damage with your main weapons. So that's going to be really good with the sniper one. And all of that kind of thing, and then the other vessels get, you know, emergency stealth field is when the ship's first shield, is like, you know, shield is initially lost, so that's kind of you know, in keeping with their initial one of their, you know, get a chameleon cloaking shield. And then over here, increases hull damage resistance, so, you know, a little bit more tanky when you get up the sensor. So I, I think you can mix and match, but. It costs quite a lot to re-implant. I don't have the money to re-implant at all. So <laughs> I'm just going to follow these up as they as they release more and more to you. Oh, and I have some kind of upgrade for this. Oh, I can level up my synergy. There we go. So now there we go. That's gone to level two synergy. That's two. That's three. You can see the cost for it. You get free synergy, which you get as a reward, which basically you can use from any really to kind of boost the amount you have and then you can kind of transfer it around but it, you can buy it basically with uh, the free credits well not the free credits the, the the actual money credits that's what I meant the opposite of free 
Well, this has been a, a little bit of a look at Star Conflict. I've been Prox Mace, and I'll see you all next time as that jet, really jet, fighter, zooms out of the hangar behind us. Uh, see you all next time. I've already said that. Bye. Still here. Bye. Bye.